Okay, so this is what we're gonna be working on at, to start with. And what you need to do first is what I typically do is I use a pumice stone. And then what I do is I go ahead and I um, mist this up and I just go ahead and spread that um, pumice stone on there for my base. Now remember, whatever color you want your moon to be, that is what the color is that you should put down first. And in this case, I am wanting the Puma Stone to be my moon color. So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and put this Puma Stone down. What I forgot to tell you to begin with is I am making a slimline card and this is just going to be the layer for that. And my slimline measurements are eight and a half by three and a half. And I, you can cut that down to make that work. I know some people make cards um, using, I call it the European paper. It's skinnier and longer than American paper, but you can make that work also. Instead of making it the um, eight and a half, I would just make that um, shorter and skinnier. Just change that out because otherwise you have to use your paper this way. This paper right here is American paper. And I'm able to get um, at least three of these on one sheet of paper. Now, if I had the European paper, and I know you guys call it A4, A5, and I don't remember what that is, but um, it, it's slender, but it's longer. But what I would do is I would actually just still make it and just make it skinnier this way um, so that you don't really waste your paper. You can get two across, I'm sure, on yours, but this way you can get three. It's just the way you want to do it. Depends on if you're using the American um, dies. So um, I'd make it work so you don't have to waste too much of your paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish getting this on and let it dry and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so the next step is you're gonna be needing some circles, you, you know, die cutting circles. And um, these are the sizes you're gonna need. You are gonna need a four and a half, a four inch, a three and a quarter inch, a two and a half inch, and a one and three quarter inch. All of those can cut, and you just need various um, lengths. They can even they can be different, but this is what I'm using. So the first thing you're going to do is put down the um, the moon, which you're going to be using for your moon. Here again is the example. And I'm gonna start right there. And the first ink I am going to be using, you could tell some of the color on here, is Faded Jeans. And there is not going to be any type of misting. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this straight away. And I'm just gonna come on here and go around it. And you can see it looks a little bit crazy at the moment but we'll fix that as we go. Okay, so that is our first step. And that is going to be what that looks like. The next one you're gonna take is gonna be, and you're gonna say, well, how am I gonna get that other color underneath there? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. But the next one is going to be, um, I'm gonna go ahead and still be using this a little bit, I think, on here. Um, I'm going to use a smaller brush. Hold on a second. Right. I'm going to use a smaller brush. And I'm still going to add a little bit of this, but not as dark. Not as heavy. You can see there's just a slight difference between the two. I should have done this one a little bit lighter, which is what I did for my first one. Okay, then I'm gonna take my next size up. And I'm just gonna keep putting that on top. And this one, I'm gonna start using a little bit of the um, blue print sketch. And again, I'm gonna make sure I do this lightly, very lightly. I'm just trying to get some circles going 
and you can kind of see the difference. If you want more of a difference, just go ahead and add more. Okay. I just want a little bit of a difference. Now I'm gonna be adding a little bit more to that. And I'm using the four and a half, or the four now. I'm gonna make that heavier. Okay, so you can start to see what the difference is on there. The next color that I'm going to be using is going to be um, chipped sapphire. And that's gonna be my darkest color. I'm still using the same brush. And I'm getting the four and a half, and I'm just setting it on there. And you could um, even make larger circles if you want to, but I didn't. And I also came in with using the black suit soot next. And all I did with that, and let me show you again, I did keep adding. Now I'm going to show you how, well, how did I get these. All I did, well, that's not the right one. I grabbed the wrong one, hold on. My black soot. All I did was I kept taking the same one, the four and a half, my largest one, and I kept just bringing it down a little bit further. And again, I gotta use my brush. Let me show you to get that up a little bit further. All I did was I just brought it down a little bit and I added the black. And I am gonna make that a little bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna come up a little bit. I want it up a little bit higher. It's different every time you do it. You just take a look and you see where you want it to be. You can see that. And I think I'm gonna go at least um, one more, or if not two. Again, I'm not making this one as dark. And you can see how that gra gradually changes. Now, what I did do for the very bottom is I ripped a piece of paper because I wanted a little bit of um, something to stand on, the lingen, and what I did for this is I flipped it and I used the um, Distress Oxide um, Faded Jeans. And that's how I made the mound there. Okay, so that's how, the, that's how it looks. And you're gonna say, well, how did I get that little bit of a, a white on here? That the next step will be, but before I do the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and do my moon. I like to put a little bit of clouds in my moon and I'm going to be using, again, the faded jeans. And I'm gonna be using a torn piece of paper. And I'm just coming in there using my faded jeans and adding just a very tiny bit to make my clouds. And there we go. I'm gonna get to add a little bit of color down there. And then overall, I just kind of smooth it out. And that's the basic whoops, for making that design. I'm gonna add a little bit of the um, black set to the top just to balance that out. From the bottom. Okay, so then the next step is you need to get out some white gesso. 
we'll get that set up. Okay, so you might be perfectly happy with the way this looks without adding any gesso to it, but I did add, I'm going to just show you a little bit close up, I did add gesso to that. And so just to show you how I did that, I put a teeny bit of white acrylic gesso, and I am using some water. I'm just spritzing that up. And then I'm going to take my brush, which I'm using a really, um, um, I don't know how to explain it to you, but it's kind of like um, a, more of a stiff a bristle brush and I am going to go around this to give it a little bit of texture and I don't want a lot and it's going to cut it because it's acrylic it's going to blend in because um, underneath the distress oxide is also water-based so it's going to blend in, but it's going to give me that texture. I don't want a lot of water. Very lightly, you're just wisping it across, but you don't need a lot. It really has to do a lot with the type of brush you have. Like I said, you can see the bristles on there. It's, and it's pretty much, it's a dry brush. Now, if I'm really not happy with how that, if it's too blended in, I'm gonna wait for that to dry. I can add a little bit more Distress Oxide in there with my circles. But for right now, I wanna let that dry and see what happens. But like I said, every time I do it, it's gonna be different. Every time you do it, it's gonna be different. You can see the difference between the two. So that's what we're gonna do so far, and the next step will be stamping. All right, so now we are ready to do some stamping, and I'm gonna show you the um, stamps that I've selected to stamp. And we're gonna use this, um, little um, bunny and his name is Pippin, Mini Pippin, and it's LAV581. And then we have, whoops, the, whoops, the mushrooms. And those are um, Mini Meadow Mushroom, LAV561. And then we have the dragon, and that is LAV557, Medelia Small. And then we have this gorgeous, gorgeous tree, and that is LAV609, Tree of Wisdom. So, um, I've already got it set up, my um, uh, stamping platform, and what I usually do is I take the acrylic and I set it, and basically it kind of like uh, gets presented like I wanna make the stamp on the card, and then I set up my platform to do just that. So what I did do yesterday, I told, or not yesterday, what I did do earlier is I wanted to have a little bit more um, definition and I did come back in and use a little bit of black soot and made a little bit more definition on the ones that were too white. So I'm going to be using to stamp um, VersaFine Clear Nocturne and uh, and I've also put a piece of paper to the side because I know that it's going to go over the side. And I won't get it all over my platform mat. And it does really make a big, big difference if your stamp is juicy or juicier, if you want to say that, when it goes to stamp. And I'm double checking. I can see some spots here where it has leaked over onto the sides that I do not want them stamping onto my picture. And just take that off with your finger before you stamp it. Hopefully you're not rubbing more in like I am. Okay, 
think we're good. What I do sometimes is because that does happen, that overlap, I will come back in here and I think you've seen in one of my videos, I have trimmed that away. Less chance of it inking where I don't want it to ink. All right, you let that set a little bit. Now I, I am stamping on top of a bit of gesso. So there is texture to that. A little bit of text texture. Yep, so I'm gonna have to do it again, which is why I love the platform, especially if I wanna to have to stamp on a different type of a surface. And I am gonna use a paper towel this time to rub that off, because I think it's really important not to have that at the side. I just really don't want that. And like I said, it was the first time I've stamped this one, so I really do need to trim that back. You can see it on here, where that's located, and I just really don't want that. So anyway, I'm just gonna stamp um, this one up, but I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna be putting them. I'm gonna do it in fast, I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna do it fast put the speed up after I stamp this one. Let's get this one going. Yeah, I think I see one little spot. You don't wanna miss, you got these details, you don't wanna miss them. Okay, so I have everything on that. I'm gonna put a little bit of clear embossing powder on it and I'll be right back to do more stamping. like that um, tutorial. I'm going to show that to you just a little bit closer. That's the uh, dragon and then the tree and then the uh, bunny and the mushroom down there. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, please subscribe and like the video if you could. Um, all of the supplies will be listed below in the description that you can find from Lavinia World. And also, um, I wanted to invite you to, we have two challenges. Um, one is um, on the Facebook group called Anything Lavinia. And you can make, share any of your cards with Lavinia stamps or Lavinia paper, Lavinia um, 
Stamps products. And um, we also have another um, challenge that's called um, um, Lavinia World Challenge. And you can do any stamping on that challenge. So um, appreciate you stopping by and um, see you again soon.